Well, the most simple sushi is just a delicious Japanese dish, but add the extra deep flavors of perfectly executed sushi sauces to it, and sushi becomes divine. Your maki sushi or nare sushi will burst with flavors by simply adding traditional teriyaki or ponsu sauce to them. Tamari sauce is probably the sauce you'll see most used with sushi, best known as the Japanese version of soy sauce, but it's vastly different from its Chinese analog. The tamari sauce is fermented with less wheat, which causes it to have a less salty flavor and thicker consistency. Well, like dashi, the tamari sauce is also used in a variety of Japanese foods in order to add a savory umami flavor to them. Well, tamari is the byproduct of miso paste and is completely different from the Chinese soybean so uh, soya, which is made by cooking soybeans with roasted wheat. Almost no wheat is added to the product during the fermentation process, which makes it the perfect sushi sauce for people who are gluten intolerant. Most sushi restaurants may prefer to use tamari sauce over soy sauce or a soy sauce mix in cooking their in-house recipes, as well as serve it as a dipping sauce. If you're on a celiac diet, then you can ask the chef to only serve you gluten-free tamari sauce and or other food on the menu. Well, you're certainly not going to make a sauce like this yourself because of the extensive fermentation process involved. But I found this Sanjay tamari sauce on Amazon to be excellent and very tasty. And of course, it's gluten-free. I'll put the link below so you can check it out. Teriyaki sauce. This is the black and sticky version of the soy sauce that's used for glazing the fish on top of the sushi. And sometimes the sushi chef also uses it, uses it to drizzle over the California roll toppings in order to enhance its flavor. It possesses a strong flavor and has a thicker consistency, which makes it a good pair with a variety of dishes. You'll need one cup of water, a quarter cup of soy sauce, five tablespoons of packed brown sugar, one tablespoon of honey, or add some more to taste, a half a tablespoon of ground ginger, and a quarter tablespoon of garlic powder, two tablespoons of cornstarch. We'll get a saucepan and place it on top of a stove as you set the temperature to medium-high heat. Then mix all the ingredients mentioned above, except for the cornstarch and cold water. Pour the cornstarch and a quarter cup cold water in a separate bowl and whisk them together. Then add this mixture to the other ingredients that you've placed in the saucepan earlier. Bring to boil and then simmer and adjust the temperature and cook time to achieve the desired consistency. Remember to add water if the sauce becomes too thick in order to soften it a bit. Once you're satisfied with the thickness and consistency, then turn off the stove and transfer the sauce to a glass bottle and refrigerate. Eel sauce or Nitsume. If your friends have been eating sushi for a while now and have fallen in love with the black sushi sauce, then surprise them by telling you you've got their homemade version of it. The Japanese call it nitsume, and it's often used to drizzle a bit uh, on the grilled eel and other fish toppings on sushi. The eel sauce has a sweet and salty flavor that goes well with most sushi dishes. If you want to make eel sauce at home, then you will need to prepare these ingredients. Half a cup of soy sauce, half a cup of mirin, uh, that's a Japanese sweet wine, half a cup of white sugar. Now get a saucepan and place it on the stove. Mix all the ingredients as you bring them to a boil and simmer until the liquid mixture is reduced to about three quarters of its original volume. Once the sauce cools down, transfer it to a cool glass jar and refrigerate. Tonkatsu sauce. Much like the two previous sauces, this too is a tastier and thicker version of soy sauce, which can also serve as a marinade or be drizzled over fish toppings on your nigiri or urumaki rolls. Its thick consistency and sweet taste enhance the flavor and texture of any dish that you'll mix it with. You can use this recipe to make tonkatsu sauce at home. The ingredients are half a cup of ketchup, one and a half teaspoons of Worcestershire sauce, two tablespoons of soy sauce, one tablespoon of brown sugar, one tablespoon of mirin, one teaspoon of grated fresh ginger, and one clove of garlic, uh, minced of course. In a medium-sized mixing bowl, place all the ingredients and th stir thoroughly until you've made a homogeneous mix. Let the mix sit for th uh, around 30 minutes in the mixing bowl in order for the flavors to blend until you get the right taste of the tonkatsu sauce. Ponsu sauce. This tangy flavored soy-based sauce has quite a similar function as the other sushi sauces in this article. And it is used as both a dipping sauce and or a marinade for the seafood and the sushi to enhance their flavor. Although it could not be verified historically, it is believed that ponsu sauce got a tangy flavor from adding fresh citrus, lemon or orange juice, which was inspired by Dutch traders in the 17th century. 
Here are the ingredients to prepare a ponzu sauce at home. Half a cup of low sodium soy sauce, a quarter cup of fresh lemon or orange juice, one tablespoon of mirin, one tablespoon of water, and one eighth teaspoon red pepper crushed. Now get a mixing bowl and mix all of the ingredients in it. Then cover the mixing bowl with a lid and keep it at room temperature for 30 to 60 minutes. After that, transfer the sauce into a clean jar and refrigerate. Nikiri sauce. It's a sweet soy sauce. The Nikiri soy based sauce may not be everyone's favorite sushi sauce, but it certainly deserves a mention here. It is almost exclusively used for nigiri to toppings. And although made from soybeans, this sushi sauce has a rather light brown color and a sweet taste. And while the other sushi sauces have a thicker consistency, this one, uh, this one though has a thinner texture, but offers a burst of rich umami flavor that is not found in any of the other sushi sauces. The ingredients for the nigiri sauce are one cup of high quality soy sauce, one cup of mirin, a half a cup of homemade dashi, one and a half tablespoon of sake. Now get a small saucepan and place it on the stove. Then set the temperature to low heat as you mix all of the ingredients in it. Allow the mixture to simmer until much of the liquid has evaporated. This should take about 15 to 20 minutes. And this will give you the perfect thickness like for a syrupy like sauce. These are my favorite sushi sauces. Be sure to check them out on my blog in the description below. I have another great video for you about the best vegan sushi rolls. If you'd like to watch more, you can watch it over here. Also, subscribe to hear more from us at bitemybun.com or search Google for Bite My Bun Sushi for all of our information on the topic. I've been Joost, your host, and thanks so much for watching us.